In this video, we're going to talk about properties of matrix scalar multiplication. This scalar means that we're multiplying matrices with real numbers. So just like addition, matrix scalar multiplication also relies very heavily on multiplication of real numbers. So a lot of properties that work for real numbers also work for matrices. The first one is associative property of multiplication. In real numbers, if you have three numbers being multiplied, you can multiply them in any order. The same works for matrix scalar multiplication. If you have two numbers and a matrix, you can multiply them in any order. You can multiply the numbers and then multiply that with matrix, or you can pick one of these numbers, multiply it with the matrix. Here we have D A and then multiply C with this product. You get the same thing. Then you have distributive properties. Notice that we are saying properties, not property. So there are two of them. Either you can distribute the scalar or you can distribute the matrix. Let's have a look at them. If you have something like this, C times A plus B, a scalar times the sum of two matrices, then this scalar gets distributed. C times A plus B, that's equal to C times A plus C times B. If you have a real number times the sum of two matrices, then you can distribute this real number. C times A plus C times B is same as C times A plus B. And it works for the other scenario as well. If you have two scalars, two real numbers being added, and you're multiplying this with a matrix, then you can distribute the matrix. You have C plus D times A, this is equals to C times A plus D times A. So here you're distributing the matrix, here you're distributing the scalar. Then you have multiplicative identity. This means that we always have a real number, a scalar, which we can use to multiply with a matrix to get the same matrix. In real numbers, we have the number one. In matrix scalar multiplication, we also have this number one. So one times any matrix is the same matrix. Then you have multiplication properties of zero. Again, not a property, but properties. So we have two of them. Either we can have zero multiplied by a matrix. In this case, we get the zero matrix. Or we can have any number multiplied by the zero matrix and we'll again get the zero matrix. In both the cases, we get the zero matrix. Then we have the closure property. All this says is if you're multiplying a matrix with a scalar, the order does not change. C times A has the same order as A. Now let's look at these properties and see why they work. Associative property of multiplication. This says C D times A equals to C times D A. Let's take an example. Let's have two real numbers, two and three, multiply them and then multiply the product with this matrix three, seven, two, four. So if you multiply this product with this matrix, this is what we get. We get two times three times three, this two times three multiplied by the first element, that's three. Then we have two times three times seven, two times three times two, and then this times four. So you're multiplying this with all of these elements. And if you're multiplying them, you can look at each of these elements here, two times three times three can be rewritten as two times three times three. If you're multiplying three real numbers, which two you pick first does not matter. So two times three times three is same as two times three times three. And you can do the same for the other elements. And you can do this because real number multiplication is associative. So these two things are equal. And here we can take the two out. We can say that this is equal to two times three times three, three times seven, three times two and three times four. So when you take the two out, this means that you're multiplying the matrix with three first. So this can be rewritten as two times a bracket, three times the matrix, three, seven, two, four. So whether you multiply two or three first, or whether you multiply three with this matrix, you're getting the same thing. So this is associative property. Let's look at the next one, distributive properties. And we have two of them. Either we can distribute the scalar or we can distribute the matrix. So let's look at this one first. So if you distribute the scalar, you have C times A plus B, that's C times A plus C times B. And if you distribute the matrix, you have C plus D times A equals to C times A plus D times A. So let's look at some examples. Let's take this one first, two times the sum of these two matrices, three, seven, two, four, and one, two, three, four. If we add these two matrices, we'll add the corresponding elements. We have two times three plus one, seven plus two, two plus three, and four plus four. Now let's multiply two with each of these elements. 
we have two times three plus one, two times seven plus two, two times two plus three and two times four plus four. Now here at this step, we can see that each element is two times three plus one is of the form a times b plus c. All of these are real numbers. And here we can use the distributive property. We can say that this is equal to two times three plus two times one. We can distribute this two. We have two times three plus two times one. We can do the same for other elements. And now we can say that this is sum of two different matrices and two times one, two times two, two times three, two times four is the second matrix. Notice that we did this because we use the distributive property for real numbers. So these two are equal and this is split into matrices. Now we have this two multiplied by this matrix and this two multiplied by this other matrix. We can take this out. We can say that this is equal to two times three, seven, two, four, and this is two times one, two, three, four. So we started with this two times the sum of the matrices and we did the sum first. And then we have this one, two times this matrix plus two times this other matrix. So we started with the left hand side and we ended up on the right hand side. So this makes sense. Now let's look at this one. C plus D times A. Let's take two different real numbers, two plus three and multiply them with this matrix three, seven, two, four. Now, if we multiply this number with this matrix, this is what we get two plus three times three, two plus three times seven, two plus three times two, two plus three times four. All of these elements get multiplied by two plus three. And at this step, we can use a distributive property two plus three times three. That's equal to two times three plus three times three. The same works for other elements. And here we can split this into two matrices, two, three, two, seven, two, 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 four. That's one. And then three, 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 seven, three, two, three, four. That's the other one. Here we can take two out here. We can take three out. This is two times this matrix three, seven, two, four. And this is three times this matrix three, seven, two, four. So it's the same matrix multiplied by two and then multiplied by three. And then we add these two. So we started with this C plus D times A and we ended up with this C times A plus D times A. So these are our distributive properties. Let's move on. Then we have a multiplicative identity. This says that you have the number one and you multiply this with a matrix. You get the same matrix. This one is more straightforward. So one times three, seven, two, four, that's one times three, one times seven, one times two, one times four. And at this step, when one of the real numbers that you're multiplying is one, you get the same real number. So this is three, seven, two, and four. And we can do this because one times any number, any real number is the same number. So this works for real numbers. This also works for matrices. Let's move on. Then we have multiplication properties of zero. Let's pick the first one. We have zero times a matrix equals to the zero matrix. Now at first I used to believe that zero times anything is zero, but in the matrix world, zero times a matrix is not zero, is zero matrix. And if you have a zero matrix to begin with, if you multiply any number to it, you will get the zero matrix. Let's see how this works. Zero times any matrix. If that's three, seven, two, four, you're multiplying zero with all of these elements. So what you're doing is you're saying that zero multiplies with three. That's our first element. Zero multiplies with seven. That's our second one. Then zero times two, then zero times four. So you're not getting just zero. You're getting a two by two matrix with all the elements equal to zero because all of them multiplied by zero gives zero. This is what we get. We get a two by two matrix with all elements zero. So this is not zero. Again, I repeat, this is the zero matrix. And this works because zero times any real number is equal to zero. This works for all real numbers. So this works for our matrices as well. In this other case, we have a real number times a zero matrix. Let's take the number as five, five times zero, 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 zero. That's going to be five times zero, five times zero, five times zero, and five times zero. All elements will stay zero. So this becomes zero, 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 zero. Again, this is true because this works for all real numbers. So these were the properties for scalar multiplication. Now let's solve a problem. A and B are two by two matrices and C and D are scalars. So the question is, which of the following matrices are equivalent to C times one A plus B? Here are the options. One A C plus B, C A plus C B and C B plus C A. Here's another problem. Which of the following matrices are equivalent to C D times A plus zero times A? And the options are A, C times D A and C D plus zero times A. 
Pause the video, try this out. Okay, so what are we given? We're given that A and B are two by two matrices and C and D are scalars. So we're multiplying these scalars with these matrices. The first one is C times one A plus B. Now one times any matrix will be the same matrix. So this is just A. So this is written C times A plus B and we can distribute C here. This is C A plus C B. So C A plus C B, this works. What about this one? One A C plus B. This is one times A, that's A. A times C is A C or C A plus B. Now this does not work because C is also multiplied to B. So this does not work. This works. What about this one? C B plus C A. Well, you can add them in any order. This also works. So in this first problem, the first one is incorrect. The next two are correct. Let's look at this one. C D times A plus zero times A. Now zero times any matrix will be zero matrix of, of the same order. So this is a two by two zero matrix and this is C D times A. So the answer should be C D times A or C times D A. Both of them work. This one is incorrect. It can't be just A. So this is correct. What about this last one? C D plus zero times A. Well, yes, you can do that. C D plus zero. Both of these are scalars. You can distribute them. So C D plus zero times A should be equal to C D times A plus zero times A. So this also works.